Hi there, welcome back to my dorm. Um, so the last video was about how hard is it to learn Chinese, so I thought, hmm, I think probably most people agree the most interesting thing when you think about Chinese is, is the writing system and the Chinese characters. So I thought we'd look a little bit more into that and explain some common misconceptions that people have about the writing. And, and, and people think this is the hardest part of Chinese, but actually, um, I don't know, uh, I think maybe six months I've learned about 600 characters, um, basic ones that are used in the first exams that you do. And once you've learned to read them, um, that's, the, that's not difficult. The difficult thing is putting them together. And more difficult than that is actually speaking them. Uh, because of, uh, as we said earlier, as I said in the last one, it's a tonal language, so everything has to be pronounced uh, in a certain tone. Um, and you might think, well, what happens if you get the tones wrong? And um, I can tell you with three months' experience living here that uh, the difference is if you get the tones right, people go, hmm, yes, I understand. And if you get the tones wrong, you kind of go, huh? Shama? What? <laughs> total, total, uh, huh? What are you speaking? That certainly isn't Chinese. So the, that was it. I think speaking is, is much, much harder. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have a look at uh, some characters first. So as I said, um, a common misconception is that uh, Chinese characters are pictographs or like hieroglyphs, like you sort of see with um, Egyptian writing and things. Um, you've kind of got to use your imagination a little bit to understand them. Uh, but these are often shown to new learners because uh, they're kind of fun. It's kind of fun to look at new characters. So we can have a look at a few now. So there, is, there are actually six different types or six methods to write Chinese characters. Uh, and pictographs is the one that we'll look at first. So if we look at this one here, this is uh, grass. Okay, so you can you can see the modern version on the right here. And um, yeah, you look at that and you think, well, how is that grass? So this is where uh, you've got to learn the components of the characters. Um, so we can see at the top here, whenever you see this at the top of the character, um, they look like two crosses, because uh, I can't point on my screen. Uh, that whenever you see those, it's something to do with plants or something like that. So if you have a look at these three examples here that we've got, so we've got the eye, spring and flower. So you can see what they were written like. Um, maybe 4,000 years ago and how they're written today which is circled. Um, so obviously if you first look at the eye you'd think well that doesn't look like an eye, obviously it's been inverted over time. And, and then you get characters like this one where um, which is to look, can, or to see. Uh, and if you use your imagination you can see these, so if I'll put a little picture up here and, and and kind of gives you an idea of uh, of of how to memorise a character. Because I kind of think of it as someone looking over, um, looking sort of through binoculars at something. It's actually, but the components of the character, the bottom part is an eye, as we've just seen, uh, and the left-hand side is hand. Hand and eye put together creates a um, uh, creates the verb to see or to look. Uh, but that's actually not a pictograph. That's um, we're going to look at that. So let's have a look at some common uh, pictographs. So uh, slide three here. So we can see here the character for fire, character for wood, character for day, the character for moon or sun or day, um, same meaning, and the character for moon, which is also the character for month. And then the bottom left, we've got what looks like. A person walking, so that's a person, and then um, what is effectively a, a box or a box shape is a mouth, and then we can see man, a door, and then shan, a mountain. But the second part and the second method of writing characters is called um, phonosemantic, or I think sometimes it's called pictophonetic. I think that's the same thing. And, and this is where, so we'll have a look here at this one. Okay, so if you have a look at slide five here, now you can see that on the right hand side, you can see uh, the same thing, it's actually a sheep. 
doesn't maybe not look like a sheep. I think it must be a sheep with horns. Um, and, but this is this is the phonetic side. So because the sheep is pronounced yang, so so although these are nothing to do with sheep, they're actually the pronunciation. So probably all of these uh, are pronounced something like yang. Now on the left hand side. Um, it's what's called a radical, and this is this is the key to learning what Chinese, the meaning of Chinese character. This is the meaning part of the character. Um, so if we have a look back, and I'll see if I can put both slides on at the same time. So the top left one is actually um, the same as the bottom left on the pictographs. So it's a person. So this means it's something to do. Um, with with people, but they say, well, I'm going to skip that one for now. The second one's a little bit more obvious. So in the top middle, as soon as I see that, I know it's some kind of insect or maybe a small reptile. They were classed as the same thing um, in ancient Chinese. Um, so even though I don't know what this character is, I don't know what it is. We're going to look it up in a second. I can tell that it's probably some kind of insect and it's probably pronounced something like yang. You can only get an idea of what the character is, but then you just have to manually, uh, individually learn them. And the, the next one on the top right is indicating walking. The one on the bottom left is actually, if we have a look at the original um, pictographs, is fire. So it's a different way of drawing the fire. So that's something to do with, so when I see that, it's something to do with heat. Something so it'll be something to do with heat or temperature or something like that. The next one's to, maybe to do with wood, and then the bottom right. Whenever you see that, it's always so you can see that it's got um, a line at the top, and then it's enclosed with two lines at the side. This is always to do with something, some kind of sickness. Uh, oh yeah, so you can see there the first one. As I said, that's more a concept because obviously you have to. It's difficult to draw concepts, isn't it, rather than actual physical things. Um, the second one. I uh, said so it's some kind of uh, some kind of insect. It's actually a, a weevil. What's a weevil? I'm going to I'm gonna have to Google what a weevil is. I don't know. It's nothing. Oh, it's an insect. Yeah, so that was right. Ugh. Yeah, it's some kind of some kind of bug or flea or something. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so yeah, and and it's pronounced. Let's have a look. Which one am I looking at? Uh, yang, yeah. So as as I so I predicted that it was some kind of insect, pronounced yang, and it's actually pronounced yang, pronounced it always yang, second time. And it's some kind of uh, some kind of bug, uh, and then the fire one is also pronounced yang, and that means molten or smelt, molten or smelt. Yeah. So again, I was correct. So I was connected. So even though I don't know what the word was, it's something to do with heat, and it's pronounced. Yang, um, and then the bottom one is pronounced Yang, Yang, third tone, so right at the bottom of your voice box, and it means to itch or to tickle, to tickle someone. So again, you know, so I said it was a sickness, um, <clears throat> but it's quite broad. So an itch uh, obviously isn't a sickness, but it's a, it's something that you you can understand. This is where you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit and. Um, you do need to be quiet. Uh, you do have to have a good imagination to uh, to be able to uh, remember characters. Okay, so next we'll look at slide number four, and this is to give you an idea. So, if you remember, I said that um, uh, on the left-hand side of the character, it's usually on the left. It can be underneath. It can be on top. But it's usually on the left. Uh, it gives you an indication of what the thing is. So if you have a look at this periodic table here, you can see that almost all the characters on the left hand side have the same uh, radical. Uh, this is actually simplified, it's slightly different in traditional. <coughs> so if I told you this was the periodic table and look at this and tell me what that character on the left hand side means, I'm pretty sure that most people can already guess what that means. So obviously it's, it means, uh, whenever you see this, it's always something to do with metal. Uh, the next one I'll just quickly go through is just simple ideographs. So it's things like up, down, one, two, three, simple, very simple things. Uh, pointing, pointing to things is the way that it's described. 
Um, uh, the fourth compound ideograms is where you have two things, uh, generally two or maybe more um, parts put together to create something. So the one that most learners learn is the uh, resting one, if you're going to have a rest. Uh, and you can see that on the left, it's, the, it's a picture of the person, the run character, meaning a person, and then on the right of the character is a tree. So you can you have to kind of imagine a person sat next to a tree resting, and that means to rest. So these are compounded diagrams. So these give you an idea of, of the meaning. Uh, the fifth and sixth, uh, I, don't too, I don't know too much about really, so I'm not going to go too much into those. Yeah, in, the, in the last one, I, um, I mentioned how, how uh, Chinese characters are put together, a bit like building blocks to create meaning. Uh, so individual words, uh, like I, I, like individually, I'm not very good at reading individual characters. I tend to uh, associate characters being together, and then I might see this character with another character later on. So I'll, I'll and, and they'll all be sort of similar meanings. Um, so I'll give you an an uh, how logical Chinese is as well is incredible. So I'm going to show you this character here, which which um, which shows um, two. Two um, ideographs. So the first one you can see looks like rain. Okay, so that's rain, and then the bottom one is uh, I think it's basically a field with uh, something going through it. Um, you might think, no, oh, what's this? And it's actually lightning. It's lightning, so you can imagine you've got the sky, and then uh, lightning coming down to the ground. So this one you can visualize quite easily. Um, <coughs> but then it also became used as the word for electricity. So the word for lightning in Chinese is the same for um, is the same as electricity. Uh, <coughs> and this these this is where you can combine things to make uh, to make new words. So we'll look at the first example here. So we've got uh, speech. So if you put the, the character for speech after the character for electricity creates electric speech and you might think hmm, what's electric speech it's a telephone um, and, and similarly you can put uh, different characters after the electricity to create different words for, for example if you put uh, shadow electric shadow is a film electric vision is a television electric ladder is a, um, uh, a lift an elevator electric ladder uh, so this is how you can, you can combine characters to create uh, to create meaning. Okay, so part two, the second part, we're going to have a look at some writing, and then we're going to uh, we're going to translate it. So this comes from this book, which I'm reading at the moment. Um, so it's called Mei Hao De Chuentu, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Now, before you say, "Well, this looks like an incredibly difficult book." Um, <coughs> It's actually what's called a graded reader. It's excellent. So if you want to learn Chinese, look for Mandarin Companion, um, and it's a graded reading. So it's a simpler version of the book. Uh, so it includes lots of sentence patterns and helps you learn to read. Okay, so we're looking at this page now on the screen. So this was this was one actually. I just um, I thought it was quite an interesting one because most people probably know. The story of great expectations and this uh, so obviously when you look at this you just think what on earth does this say this I remember two years ago I would look at this and think there's no way in the world I'm ever ever going to be able to understand this it's completely impossible um, the book is actually in simplified the reason why I'm reading it at the moment is so I don't forget how to read simplified but I've typed it out here in traditional um, so we're going to have a look at what these mean so if you remember I said that Chinese characters are written <coughs> uh, in a block of writing, they aren't separated, the different words aren't separated, and this is something that takes a little while to get used to. So then let's have a look at this first line then. So we've got Ni Kan Dao, Wo Jia Shan, Jie Ge Dong Shi Ma. Okay, so if you try and read individually, this reads as... So look at this one, so it's slide 12. Um, 
you, so character by character it says you, see, arrive, I, foot, on, this, and then that's a measure word, uh, east, west, question particle. So that makes no sense whatsoever when you try, if you try and read Chinese characters individually. You can't read like this because that obviously makes no sense whatsoever. So if we split them up, so I've split them up here, so we've got, now we've got you, C arrive, I, foot on, uh, this east west, uh, question. So these are the different parts of the, um, these are the different parts of, of, of the sentence. So the first one, ni, means you, ni, and now we've got kan dao. So that means see arrive. So this is the way that uh, Chinese characters work. So because if you remember, we said that they don't have, you can't change verbs. So see arrive basically means seen. So you seen. Uh, I or me is the same character. Um, so uh, you see I, and then foot on. So it means on the foot, but that's just reversed. And then uh, this measure word means these or this, uh, and then east-west translates as things, and then a question particle. So he's saying, you see those things on my feet? So if you have a look at the picture, this is actually one, this is the reason I picked it, is because you have a look, he's got shackles on his feet. So this is the reason why, um, that's the reason why he's saying that. So he's saying, you see these things on my feet? And then the second line, uh, okay, so let's break this one down. So the literal again, if you try and read these individually, um, I need, want, one, measure word, work, tool, handle, it, hit, open, also want, one, some, eat, possessive particle. Again, so this is very, very difficult to read when you try and read it as individual characters. But once you've, if we have a look at the next slide, slide 14, you can see here I've split the words up into different things, uh, different aspects of it. So I, and then need one put together, kind of means, like, it's a strong version of want, like must. Um, maybe must is a similar English word. Uh, one measure word, and then work tool put together is a tool. So I bring me a tool. Uh, you must bring me a tool, and then handle it, hit open, means uh, it's a structure. I'm not even going to go into the structure of uh, this character here because it's incredibly difficult to learn. We don't have this in English. We don't use this structure, and there's no translation to it in English at all. Uh, um, so then it's, it's quite high level, so I'm not going to that. Uh, so he's basically saying... Um, you must bring me a tool to hit this thing open and also bring some food. So that's what he's saying there. Okay, and then the next line, let's have a look at the next line. Okay, so, um, Mintian, Zhao Shang, Woman, Hai Zhao, Jelly, Chen Mian, Waba, Gong Chu, Ha Chu, Da, Dai Guo Lai. Okay, so individually, bright day, early on, I plural at this here, see face, you handle work tool and eat, possessive particle, bring, particle indicating a process, come. So again, reading it individually is completely impossible, so you have to split these up. Um, and then if we split these up, uh, we can see here, um, so I've split them up, so uh, bright day means tomorrow, and then early on means morning. So tomorrow morning we at this place meet, you handle tools and food, bring this direction. The direction part is like a direction complement, they called. Because it's basically saying in English, bring the tool, bring the tool to get these shackles off and food, bring it here tomorrow morning. Um, and then I split up the next sentence there, you can see, um, uh, if you don't come or this matter, tell other people, you know what will happen. So it's a rhetorical question. English, if you don't come here, uh, if you don't come or you tell someone about this, you know what will happen. And then uh, the last one he says, I also have a friend on this place here, he especially likes eating children's hearts. So I'll bring my, if you don't come 
where you tell someone about this. I'll bring my friend here and he likes to eat children. So we've got here, see these things on my ankles? You better bring me a tool and get this thing off and also bring me some food. Meet you in the morning with a tool and some food. If you don't come, I'll tell anyone about this. You know what will happen? I'll bring my friend here and he likes to eat children. Well, I'll definitely come, honest. After I finished speaking, he left quickly and once, far, once he was far away, uh, once he was far enough away, I quickly ran home. Um, so that's what this text, uh, slide 19, so that's what that slide uh, says. So that gives you an idea of the, um, uh, of the way that it's written. Yeah, so there you go, I hope that's given you a bit more insight, insight into understanding how to read. Uh, how to read Chinese and how the, uh, how, the, how the characters work and how they're put together to create meaning. Um, so, I hope that was interesting. Um, see you next time. Bye.